Hello lovely people. In this video, I'm going to show you why do you need a front subwoofer if you have an IB sub. So for those who are new to the channel, I have an Alpi Status 3-way in the front, an Alpi Status subwoofer in infinite baffle. I put it there last week just to test it out and see how it performs. I'm very, very happy with the performance, how it is. Output is amazing as well. However, the mid bass is not there. And now a lot of people have problems with mid bass. And let me show you. <clears throat> so I do have my status six and a half in the kicks over there. And I have this one. So this is my front subwoofer, which at the moment housing a Dayton 10 inch reference subwoofer. And it kind of bridges the gap between the mid bass and the infinite baffle sub. Now, with this current setup that I have, I have only a DSP and only a four channel because I didn't want to put anything else. So on those on this four channel, I don't have channels. I have uh, the front end running on passives. And then I have this one running bridged on the other two channels. And at the moment, I couldn't connect the upfront subwoofer. And I decided to show you actually why do we need the front subwoofer in this particular setup, six and a half in the kicks and an infinite baffle sub. Why do we need it and why there's no mid bass in this setup? So for this, I'm not going to play any songs or any demos. What I'm going to do, we're going to jump into the laptop and I'm going to show you the measurements when I tune the system, what it show and where the mid bass goes. So these are the measurements from the tuning session that I had with this. So uh, it's not my usual uh, tuning session because it was very, very quick and dirty. I did this in like half an hour because obviously there's only three things to tune and there's, I didn't have enough time and I didn't want to waste because it was just a t test. So you can see it's not named properly. I have like LR, we have like some not named anything and just some responses. And I want to show you is this, this is uh, my subwoofer response uh, in infinite baffle. So this is the Alpine status in infinite baffle. And you can see <clears throat> it plays all the way down to whatever, 12 hertz and up on the upper range above like 100, 120. But here you can see this massive, massive hole. And this massive hole is due to the cabin dimensions. So the length of the car, it has like a half wave that can fit in there and it kind of sits at like 68, 61, 60 hertz. So this is a massive hole, uh, what is called a cancellation. And with this hole, you cannot do anything. If the cancellation would be not there, <clears throat> this wouldn't be like a massive trench. It would be like a flat response all the way up to 100. And then it would be pro no problem. There would be no issue. Uh, it would be perfect integration. Now, if I would take my left or right side because it's kind of the same uh so this is the alpine status three-way on passives that's why you see like the whole range in one measurement because i cannot take individual drivers so let's take for example the right side not the left one yeah the left one is the further one and on the left one <clears throat> this is again with no crossovers applied or running like raw and you can see that I don't have any bottom end with these drivers. So this is the main difference between a low Q driver and a high Q driver. Uh, let me very quickly find you the SB17s that I had before. Okay, so there it is. I just found the old measurements from the SB17s and you can see the, so SB17s have a very low Q of like point, oh, I don't remember, point two, point three, something like that. And the status drivers has a very high Q of like point seven or something like that. And you can see the difference in raw measurements with no crossovers applied uh, between these two drivers. So with the low Q driver, we have much more low end extension <clears throat> and we can use a appropriate crossover to match the target. However, with the high Q driver, such as car audio driver, you cannot really do much because they don't play lower frequencies. It is, has a high uh, FS as well as like 80 or something like that. And this was my uh, target 
for this that I decided to go. So I decided to cross it at about 80 hertz, something like that, because it's like acoustically it, it looks to be fine. Now the problem is that I know that my subwoofer is gonna have problems playing that high, but the mid bass cannot play low. So if I match the target like this, I will need to remove this peak with AQ. However, if I'm not gonna, if I don't want to lose the extension, I need to choose a lower target curve. And again, on passives, I cannot really do much because if I choose a higher curve like this, uh, I cannot boost all of these frequencies. So on passives, I'm kind of tied to what it is. That's why I chose this crossover. Now the subwoofer here, you can see in this specific region, in the crossover region between 60 and 80, it has massive problems. So if I take this subwoofer, and try to match it to the target, I need to find a crossover. And what I did, so this is named EQ, but it's not EQ, it's uh, XO crossovers, because it's just crossovers applied. I chose crossovers like this. So I chose just to remove this top peak because I didn't want to inflict this area even more. And what I did, I applied a subsonic filter as well, because it, again, it is an 11 inch, I don't want it to play all the way down because I don't really need it and it doesn't have the displacement. So I did apply a subsonic of like 25 hertz or something like that, just to remove that. And we have something like this. Now, if I would bring this down just to match it a bit better with the target, something like this, because I need, I need it to follow like here and to have some slope to sum with the mid base. However, here you see it's a massive, massive dip and massive problem. And with this, you cannot do anything. You cannot boost it because it's just, it's too much energy and it's a cancellation. So even that boost is not gonna go anywhere. And with like the response of left and right, like this, you can already see there's gonna be a problem. So even right, side has even less extension it's only like down to 100 hertz or so and then it like off a cliff drops so you can see even without <clears throat> measuring the responses together that this is going to be a very problematic issue that uh, you will not be able to solve so actually let's see what happens when you sum them now I'm lost with these measurements because I did quite a lot of them. So this is after EQ, this is left side. I would imagine this is the sum because I didn't, I didn't name anything. Yeah. So this was in phase. No, this was out of phase and this was in phase. And basically this is the best that I could get from these because again, this cancellation and the fact that the six and a halves don't play low, I have this issue. Now, this issue is that here, ideally you would want a rising response from about 200 all the way down. So it's like if we take from 300 and I overlay this one, let's bring it up something like this. There we go. So according to this target, you can already see. So this is the top end. It's kind of fine. This is a cancellation for the window. This is a cancellation between the drivers, as I mentioned before. But here you have a massive hole between like what? 50 and 80. And the worst is at 60. And this is exactly the range where the mid base lives. So with this setup, I have very nice low end. I have very nice lower mid range, but I don't have mid base. I have some of it. <laughs> it, it does play somewhat, but it's nothing like it used to be in my previous system. So this is a prime example why infinite baffle subwoofer with six and a halves don't really work it together. You need some kind of a solution. So let's talk about solutions. One of the solutions is, as I mentioned, you can take a lower Q driver, a like a home audio driver that has that low extension and fill up this. However, then you will be limited by output because you cannot expect a two six and a halves to match level of uh, like an infinite baffle 15 inch. It's just impossible. So you can cover the gap 
they're gonna play it but it's not gonna be loud the louder you play the more excursion and they're gonna go out of x max and they're gonna start distorting so it is solution for low volumes but not anything higher now other solution is to have bigger drivers uh, as mid bass drivers so these six and a half drivers as i showed they roll off quite steep because they have a quite a high fs and quite high Q, so it's like 0.7 Q with 80 FS. If you would have an eight inch drivers that might have a similar response to this, so an eight inch, a bigger driver with similar response would have more output and hence it would blend a bit better with the infinite baffle subwoofer in the back. However, with eight inch drivers, again, there's problems because very few people can fit them in the doors it's kind of pointless because if you have an eight inch driver in the door playing down to 50 or 45 hertz it's gonna be a lot of rattles no matter how much deadening you put in the kicks if you can fit but it has to be infinite baffle in the kicks if you put an eight inch in a small sealed enclosure you're not gonna have this bottom end at all you can put them under the seats but then again problems because you're not gonna have any top end it, they're gonna play up to 150 and then drop off a cliff so the best solution for this is a front subwoofer and here is a measurement of my front subwoofer so let's remove this one and this so this is the brown one that if you can see this is raw measurements with no crossovers applied so imagine a crossover here and a crossover there and this front subwoofer covers perfectly it's perfectly covers that gap that you have between infinite baffle subwoofer and six and a half in the kicks or in the doors or whatever it covers it perfectly and the thing is it has enough output because it's a 10 inch it has a lot of excursion so a 10 inch cross at like 40 45 is gonna have massive amounts of output it's not a problem at all and basically this is the main reason why you need a front subwoofer there are options where you can bridge a gap between the infinite baffle and six and a half however front subwoofer is the best option you can put it like i have it in the central console some have it most of them have it in the passenger kicks or in the glove box and stuff but basically this is the main reason why you need a front subwoofer so now next tune is going to be when i'm going to put all my amps and everything i'm going to utilize this front subwoofer for more mid bass because now as you can see like this i don't have any mid bass and it's so bad because like some songs you can really tell the difference that basically nothing is playing there on some you cannot because like on rap you have all the music here and not much of this mid bass but like for rock for metal when you have kick drums and everything all the sounds live here and at the moment i don't have it but yeah i'm gonna have it soon thank you very much for watching guys and i will see you in the next one